Hello, my name is Carlos, and for this Teach One assignment, I'll be discussing comparison of means while focusing on risk-adjusted X-bar control chart for question two of the homework. This is for HAP 725, Statistical Process Control, Fall 2018. Question two states the following. In health administration programs, accounting courses typically cover cost data. Forensic accounting tries to detect fraud through accounting procedures. The following data were obtained regarding the cost of taking care of patients over several time periods. Are our costs within expectation? To make this assessment, we can use an X-bar chart, which can display and analyze data over different time periods. This allows us to compare the observed versus expected cost for patients across a length of time. We can then determine how costs vary and indicate if the process or the cost of treating patients has increased or decreased. However, for this question, we'll be using a risk-adjusted X-bar chart, which can tell us whether costs have improved beyond what is expected based on patient conditions. Lastly, two data elements are needed to create this X-bar chart, a continuous observed outcome collected over time across the sample of patients and expected outcome or risk, which can be calculated from an MMI index. We can begin by calculating average costs. Open the Excel file data two for comparison of means for question two. We want to calculate the average for observed and expected costs per month. We can do that by selecting the cell beneath July costs and entering the formula equals average parentheses B2 through B11. Hit enter and drag the cell to your right to populate the remaining fields. Next, we want to calculate the differences between the observed costs and expected costs for each month. In a new cell, type the Excel function equals B2 minus C2. Press enter and drag the cell down. Repeat for the other months. Next, we calculate the standard deviation. First, we want to calculate the standard deviation for all differences. We can do that by selecting the cells as indicated in the image and entering in the formula equals standard deviation parentheses I2 through K11. This selects all differences for all months. Next, we want to calculate the standard deviation for each period. We do that by selecting the standard deviation of differences and dividing by the square root of the number of patients or observations for each month. So in uh, the month of September, we have nine patients. So the end number would be nine, and in August, eight, and July, 10. Repeat that for all three cells. To begin calculating the upper and lower limits, we must first select a confidence interval. In this case, we selected 99.5, so that the chance of making an erroneous conclusion is dropped to half a percent. Looking at the t-table in the bottom right, you see that three numbers are highlighted. For the month of July, since it has 10 instances, the t-value is 3.2. For August, 8, t-value 3.4, September, 9, 3.3. Now create a new table that contains month average cost, standard deviation of differences, UCL, LCL for upper and lower limits, and T values into a new table. Control limits are used to detect data out of bounds using standard deviation as parameters and determining whether a process is not in control and not operating within expectations. To calculate the upper limit within Excel, you select the average expected cost plus the t-value times standard deviation of differences. To calculate the lower limit, it's the same except that you are subtracting the t-value. Once we've calculated the upper and lower control limit, we can begin creating an x-bar chart. First, select the month and average cost cells and insert a 2D line chart. The blue line you see represents the actual cost for patient care across three months. Next, right-click the chart, click Select Data, then Add. Next, we're going to select the upper and lower control limit. First, you highlight the upper control limit cell and insert that into the cell that says Series Name and the three values beneath that into the series values. Repeat the process for lower control limit. 
Once we have lines for the upper and lower control limit, we need to add chart elements. Left click the chart to select chart title, axis titles, and legend. Next, right click the Y axis and select format access. Change bounds from minimum to 250 and maximum to 550 as shown in the image. You can change the placeholder titles by left clicking them. Right click the line for actual cost and click format data series. Click the paint bucket, marker, marker options to add markers. Increase the size for visibility. If you've been following along, we should now have a complete X-bar chart. Looking at the chart, points that fall within control limits indicate discrepancies that can be expected by chance alone. In the month of July and September, actual costs fell above the upper limit, which is worse than expected. For the month of August, costs fell within upper and lower limits and then therefore met expectations. To answer the initial question, costs are only within expectations for the month of August. This concludes the presentation. Thanks for watching.